Hey, what's up guys? Nuno here. Let's talk about the new render engine. I would like to show you my first look at D5 Render. It's a render engine based on Unreal Engine 4 and it uses real-time ray tracing, also known as RTX. This technique can achieve realistic lighting effects, it creates better and more realistic shadows and reflections. The D5 Render has direct integration with popular 3D modeling software like SketchUp, 3ds Max, Revit and others and since it's a real-time renderer, using the graphics card instead of the CPU, it can render images in seconds. And not just images, you can also create video with V5 Render. You can use PBM materials from any textures library and it comes with some post-production tools that you can use directly inside the software. As we can see here, it has over a thousand vegetation assets ready to use, 3D people, vehicles and some models with animation included. And what's most interesting about this software is that it's forever free. If you are using the software just to render images, you can use the free version, they do have a more limited library of included assets, but you can always add your own. As for the professional version, they currently have it priced at $480 and it's lifetime access, so it means all the updates will be free. They do say here that this price will expire this year, let's see what they will offer after that. Let's now dive into a quick look inside D5 Render. So when you first launch the D5 Render, this is the splash screen that you will see. So here you can create a new scene. You can open your existing one. You also have here the what's new, the user manual, the official forum. So all of the links, useful links, you can uh, access directly here. And for this video, I'll open one of the scenes they have uh, for free available in their website. So I'll click here. Okay, now that we have this scene load up, let's explore a little bit the interface. So on the left side, you have here the main things that you are going to use, which is the sky, the filter, which is the exposure, contrast, uh, fog, all of these things, the cameras, the camera setup, I mean, and the camera list. So here you can save your own scenes. For example, this one can be uh, daytime and this one can be nighttime or blue hour. And you can click here and it will automatically go to that scene or here you can see that it adjusted the, the scene because it has a different sky, different settings. So let's go back to the first one. And also here you'll see the list of files in this project. So you see here all the spotlights that are being used, they are all grouped already. One point light, so all of these things. And let's go back here. Let's go back here to the sky. And on D5 you have two ways of navigate. You can either use this uh, WSD. This is very similar to what you have in Lumion, for example, which you use the right mouse to look around. And then you, with the WSD, you can move in the, inside the scene. So this is uh, very, very similar to Lumion. But if you come from a software like 3ds Max and you're using Corona or V-Ray, probably you are more used to use the 3D view. And on this one, if you click the middle mouse or the right mouse click, you will rotate the camera like this. And holding the shift and middle mouse, you can pan the camera like this. And with this wheel, you can just zoom in into any specific point that you would like to see. For this video, and since I'm uh, mostly lately using Lumion, I will use the WSD. And before we go into any of these options here, I want to talk first about this uh, material picker. So to select any material, you first click here or use the hotkey, which is I on the keyboard and you select any surface. So let's say instead of this painting, I want something else. So I click it and now I have here the properties. And so as you can see, I have here a base color, normal map, specular, roughness, metal. This metal map, it's basically a black and white map, which the black, it's the areas that are non-metallic and the white is areas that are metallic. So we'll go into this later. You have the emit occlusion and you have light intensity. So if I increase this, this will emit light, but we don't want that. So let's disable it. And so let's uh, select something else. 
D5 render comes with some uh, materials. We can just go here to assets. And now we have here this uh, library of uh, textures that we can use. So let's select some stone. Let's see, stone. Actually, some marble. And let's see, something, maybe this one. So when you click it, uh, it can start downloading the, the texture. And then just click and it will be hi highlighted like this. And so if you click here, it will apply this texture. But if you continue to click in other objects, it will continue to apply this texture. So now you can just press escape. And actually, let me select now again this. And we need to adjust the tiling of this texture. So if you go here to UV, let's make it uh, 10. Okay, now we can see some of this texture. Maybe let's continue to five. Okay, 20, I think like this is okay. You can also rotate the texture. So to find a better, better pattern here. So let's see. Okay, it's a little bit like this. You can also offset it. You can just uh, drag like this with when you have this icon here or the arrows. You can just drag to one side and to another. And so you can find the best position for the texture. So I like it here. And you can also adjust the color. You can either do this in two ways. You can either go here to color and just do it here. You know, increase this color if you want something else. Of course, we will do that into this marble, but let me just put this to the zero again and this value to 100, which is the default. Or you can go to base color here and click on this texture. And here you'll see some properties as well. So here, if you increase this value, it's the amount of light of this texture. So you are increasing the brightness and you can increase the contrast as well. So again, let's put this to the default values. Okay, so this is for changing any material that we have here. You can see how fast it is. But what if I want to use one material that is not here from this uh, library? It's also quite easy. So first I will reset this material and I want here to select a new texture. So I select one from Polygon. So this wood flooring. And we need to later adjust all of these properties of the UV, but for now let's continue to add the, the textures, the normal map, the roughness, so we can select, it's a gloss map, we can select gloss and click here, inverted. And so now it's a roughness map. And what else we do we have there? Displacement. Well, actually we can turn this into a displacement. We can just go here and displacement. Okay, now we have this height here, so we can select a displacement map. Okay. And now let's go here to UV and let's put this to zero rotation to zero and let's adjust here something else could be uh, maybe something more like 75 now it feels a little bit uh, stretched this texture and uh, what i want to do i want to click here on this uh, lock icon and i want to put this y at 50. Actually, it's the opposite. I want to put this one at 100. Okay, feel better. Now 125. Okay, so I will leave it uh, for now like this. And I will just just this property here a little bit. Uh, about uh, here, maybe in the middle. Okay. And if you notice this part here, let's see more to the light. So you can also adjust this uh, roughness value. If you decrease it all the way, it will be very glossy, this surface. So let's leave it about here. 
You can see these parts here, it's because of the displacement. So we need to adjust a little bit this displacement. So just something slightly like this, it's okay. So we just see a little bit of this. And you can also adjust the normal map uh, if you want it to be not so strong, but I'll leave it as a default value. Okay, so. Okay, I think it's looking good. So they also have uh, models here. So if you see here, you have, uh, well, this is the category with all, but uh, you can go to some grass, some cars, bus. Uh, this is uh, for people. So you can have a dancing man here. <laughs> Actually, let me download this one. And let's place it uh, here. So now, if you are uh, familiar with Unreal Engine 4, uh, you'll see that many of these uh, gizmos are very similar to what we have there. So if you press V, it will keep scrolling from the Move to the Scale tool. So, and this here, it's to rotate these ones here on the sides. So let's just rotate this guy. And now let's move it. So more or less here. So you can see that we already have one animated person here. So for video to be useful. And uh, let's see what else we can add here. Let's add a, this tree. Maybe we can add this tree here on the exterior. And one more. Now for this second one, I'm going to increase the scale and I'm going to move it back and further back. Maybe like so. Okay. And so as you can see, you have a lot of uh, assets here ready to use, like the cars, trucks, other dynamic objects. So a lot of things, but you can also add your own. And uh, to do this, you have here the your local library. And I don't have any models yet, but I have one material. And as for models, let's try to import something else here. And so to do this, we can go here to the top file and import. And I will import a rug from Polygon as well. So I will import the FPX file. And you will see here on the imported files to start loading up this bar. And now that it's done, I can click here and I will place it uh, here. Actually, I'm gonna close this for now. I will rotate this 90 degrees. Okay, I will scale it just slightly like, like this. Okay. And now it's all white, we need to add the material. So let's pick the color, the material picker, and let's select the texture. So textures. So we need the color. It's this one. Okay. Now the normal map. And uh, the roughness. which in this case, it's the gloss, so we need to invert, okay. And I think we have a emit occlusion, yeah. So let's load up. Okay. Okay, you can see our rug here placed. Now let me just move this further back a little bit. So now let's go here to the left side. We can see the sky. Right now it's with a custom because uh, you can load up your custom HDRIs. So this is a very nice thing. And the sky intensity. So if you decrease the sky intensity, you see that your scene will become more, will become darker. So let's make it one. The color temperature as well. So it will be warmer or colder. So 
it's a little bit at about here. You can rotate as well the, the sky, but right now it's not changing the sun because this uh, sun position, it's here when you select this sun, you can customize the sunlight intensity. So if you want stronger, so let's select by default and uh, the solar height as well. So if you want the sun to be lower, close to the horizon, so the light will be going in a little bit more inside the room. Irradiation angle as well, so which is the position where the sun is. So let's leave it about here. And the color temperature is fine for the sun. This light source radius is if you want the shadows to be sharper or not. So you can see here the difference. So I'll leave it at about three. Now let's move to the color adjustments. You can select this auto exposure. Um, for this case, I think it's okay to leave it like uh, this off. And uh, can select the contrast, more contrast, less contrast. You can always undo anything, by the way, just uh, hit Ctrl Z and you undo what you did here. So the shadow, you can increase the shadows or decrease. So Ctrl Z, undo. And you have also color temperature, bloom. So this bloom effect it will overexpose the highlight areas. So as you can see here, the lens flare, saturation. You can add your custom loads here directly. So this loads, it's a file that already has some color grading. And so when you load any loot here, it will change the, the color of your scene. Clay mode, this is useful when you want to just see exactly how is your scene, if it has good contrast, if the white areas are really white or, or the darker areas are really dark. So this is quite useful. If you want, for example, uh, activate this. And now let's say that I want my dark areas to be a little bit darker so I can adjust this. And here the shadows as well, a little bit more. Now I can go back here, okay, and I can see the difference. And of course now it overexposed because I have the, the bloom effect. So you can always go back here to the highlights and re remove a little bit. Okay. Weather is if you want to add some fog. Lens effect, the dep depth of field. I'm not going to add that for this scene. So now we have here all the settings for the camera. You can, this camera movement speed to be when you are moving around the camera. If you increase the movement speed, let's say to the maximum, to move much faster. So I'm going to put this back to 10. And the camera crippling plane is that if you were, let's say here on this position, and now you want this part to not be in the scene, you can increase this camera clipping and see, but it will start cutting off this part. So this is useful if you are in small spaces where you have the, the wall right next to the camera and you cannot really get the shot that you want. So you can use this camera clipping plane. For this scene, we don't need it. Camera rotation as well. If you want a more dynamic shot, especially for video, it could be very interesting this. High level and field of view, which is basically the camera focal length. Okay, let's leave it at what it was. Now let's go back here to this scene. And, and as you can see, my settings changed because this scene has all the settings here stored. So whatever you do, uh, let's say, let's go back here. I changed the, I changed the sky, right? So let's uh, change here again a little bit and this angle as well, more to this side. And now we'll have to go here and press here, update scene. Okay. And now every time we go here and then we go back, we'll have stored the lighting that we changed. Let's speak now a little bit about lighting. If we go here and we place any light like spotlight, click here. You have spotlight, you have strip light, rectangular light and point light. So if you place here the light, 
and then let's move it up so now we have a lot of light on this scene so it will not be so visible but uh, let me place it about here yeah so you can change here the settings for the light you can change the on the color the color temperature of the light let's put it at 4000 for example and move this a little bit more like here and uh, you have other things like brightness so how bright the light is we have the cone angle the attenuation radius is how far you want the light to go so let's say until here only okay on a further video i'll probably cover more about which type of lighting and what do they do which one of them but uh, for this quick intro this uh, this will do and now let's go here to render photo and here you can see that you can see like already the 16 by 9 5 by 5 which is a square ratio or 4 by 3 which is the most typical for any camera actually i'm gonna leave it at uh, 5 by 5 we can go here back to the scene okay okay and here you can customize so i'm gonna put 2k but actually i want 5 by 5 so i'm gonna put here 2000 and here 2000 so it's a square ratio and now to render you can just press here export So when you save the file, it will start uh, exporting. It really is quite fast. For this scene, I don't know, probably it will take about 30 seconds to, to render this scene at 2K. Okay, let's open the folder. And so here I have my rendered scene at 2K. So you can see how fast it was to change all of these settings and putting some extra things like this carpet, changing this material, changing a little bit the lighting. And all of this it's uh, with uh, ray tracing. It's all done in real time, so you don't need to add any reflection planes or reflection probes. So everything is working automatically. And this video is already quite long for an introduction for this uh, D5 render. So let me know what you think. And in future videos, I'll start covering a little bit more about this D5 render. And that's all for today. Let me know what you think about D5 Render in the comments below this video. I hope you liked this video and don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button and I'll see you in the next one.